All right, so in this series of tutorials, we'll be looking at the Flask framework powered by Python. It's an excellent framework to start with because you can start small, literally building an app in a single file, then as your site becomes more and more complex, you can scale your application up to multiple files and folders. Now before we begin, you should have a version of Python 2.7 installed. I'm using version 2.76. You also need pip for installing Python packages as well as virtual env. And check the video description for info on all the tools that I'm using as well as links on installing Python, pip, and virtual env. There's also a link in the blog post associated with this video. Now in this first video, we'll be going over setting up basic Flask structure and developing a static st site style with Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and navigate to a directory that's convenient to you, such as the desktop or my documents. And you can see here, I'm in my documents folder. Let's go ahead and create a new folder to house your project called Flask Intro. So make directory Flask Intro. Go ahead and CD into that directory. And now we need to create and activate a virtual environment. So to create a virtual environment, we use the virtual M command. And then I'm going to use the flag no site packages, which is just completely isolate our environments. And then I'm going to use the folder name of VENV. And that folder is going to house all of our files that's going to go into the virtual environment. And this is just a common convention. So you can see this pulled in our Python version, um, which in my case again is 2.76, then installed setup tools, and then pip. So now I want to activate the virtual environment so I can do source and then the directory name bin and then activate and this is applicable to a Unix environment it's going to be a little bit different in Windows so check out the virtual env official documentation to see how to activate this in a Windows environment so now it's activated and you can see that it's activated because you can see the folder is highlighted here and now we, let's go ahead and install Flask. I'm going to do pip install Flask. So while that's installing, let's talk a little bit about the project structure. So if you're familiar with a high-level web framework such as Django, then you're accustomed to the fact that it does a lot for you, including defining a project structure that you should adhere to. Flask, on the other hand, does not force any structure on you, which can actually make it difficult for beginners to get started. Now with that in mind, it's generally a good idea to just start with a single file for the Flask components to make things simple before you start scaling to multiple files and folders. So within that Flask intro folder, let's go ahead and add a new file called app.py. And this is a Unix command that I'm using, is touch. So if you're on Windows, you want to use the appropriate commands. So that created that app.py file, and we're going to use that to house the Python code for our actual Flask application. Now we want to create a folder for our static files such as CSS, um, JavaScript files, images, videos, that sort of thing. We call that static. And then we're going to create a directory called templates, which are going to hold our HTML files. So that's our basic project structure. And you can go ahead and check out the blog posts, which again, you can find a link to within this video's description to learn more about this structure and how the app.py file ties each component together. All right, so next let's go ahead and start coding. So let's open up a code editor and I'm going to be using Sublime Text. So I can use this command here and this is just a shortcut command. And what this will do is it will open up a new, in, new um, instance of Sublime Text and it pulls in that entire directory. So you can see the static and templates folders this is our virtual environment, and then of course we have app.py here. Okay, so you want to start by importing the Flask class from the Flask module. So from Flask, import Flask, and make sure this that's should actually be capitalized. And now create the application object. So app equals Flask. Okay, so now we're ready to set up our first route. And to do that, we want to use a decorator to join a URL to a function. 
So let's take a look at that decorator. So that's going to be app.route. And then in, within the parentheses here, we can add our actual URL. This is just going to be the main URL, so just a forward slash. And let's go ahead and call the function home. And finally, for the response, we just want to return a hello world string. Now we need to start the server with the run method. So I can do a little tab complete here and then do app.run. And then I want to go ahead and turn on the debug mode. So the debug mode will give us a debugger that we can use in the browser as well as an auto reload feature for when code changes are made. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So that's it. That's our entire application right there. So now let's go ahead and test it out. Let's so going back to our terminal here. Go ahead and fire up the development server using Python app.py. You can see that the development server is running on this local URL 127.0.0.1, and that's also known as localhost. So if we open up our web browser here and navigate to localhost port 5000, we can see in the terminal here that there was a git request, it went to this main URL, and then we got a 200 response. And then you can see that there's our basic hello world text that's rendered in HTML. So if you want to see the entire response object, we can go ahead and right click, go to inspect element, and this opens up Chrome Developer Tools, and then we can click the Network tab. And then if you refresh your browser, you can see that there's a Git request, we got the 200 OK response, and then the content type was text and HTML. And if you notice in our code, we didn't have to actually do any of that. We only had to return the string. So Flask went ahead and defined the status code and the content type for us. And if you want a little bit more information on how that works, be sure to check out the Real Python course at realpython.com. Okay, so let's go ahead and add one more route. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this, save some time. And so um, let's go ahead and call this route welcome. So this is going to go to the welcome URL. Want to link that to this welcome function. Now instead of just returning a, a string, let's go ahead and render a full HTML template. And I want to use the method return template, or I'm sorry, render template. And then let's go ahead and put in the template name here. And actually, I do need that return still. And then we want to make sure that we import the render template method here. So now if we uh, test that out within our browser, let's go ahead and go to welcome. You'll see that we have an error here. And notice that we are not just seeing a regular 500 error, which if we scroll up here on developer tools, you can see that it actually is a 500 error there. That's just an internal server error. So since we're not, because we're not seeing that error, Flask is giving us more to work with, which can be quite handy. And this is just part of the debugger. So let's say you remove the debug mode, or let's actually just change this to false. And then go back to our browser, and refresh that. You can see that now we're just getting that internal server error. So the debugger actually adds a lot for us. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. So this error just means that Flask is trying to find that welcome.html template, but can't find it. So we need to go ahead and add it in. And also because the debugger was enabled, we don't have to actually restart the server after code changes were made. So after we added this route in, it was watching for changes, and when it saw them, it automatically refreshed the development server. So normally you would have to actually kill the server and then actually restart the server if you don't have that debug mode enabled.
So that can save us a lot of time, obviously. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that welcome file. Do a new file here. We'll call it welcome.html. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this code in just for time's sake. And this is actually from the GitHub repo, which you'll have a link to within the video's description. Let me go ahead and paste this code in. This is just a straightforward HTML page. You can also see that we have a link here to a Bootstrap CSS style sheet. Now that style sheet isn't there yet. We're going to be adding that in a minute, but just take note of that. So now if we go back to the browser and to that welcome URL, click refresh, you can see our page here. If you click this link, it goes back to the main URL. So there's nothing too special going on here. So let's go ahead and add in some quick boot bootstrap styles. So to do that, we can go ahead and navigate to getbootstrap.com. And I'm going to go ahead and download Bootstrap. I'm going to click Download Bootstrap. And then if you open up the Downloads folder, you can see that there is the zip file. Go ahead and extract the contents of that file. After you extract the contents, you will actually see a file that looks like this. Uh, because I've already downloaded this, obviously. So now we want to grab the CSS file here. So that's going to be bootstrap.min.css. I'm going to go ahead and copy that and then paste that within the static directory. And then I want to go ahead and do the same thing for this JavaScript file. Now we're not going to use the JavaScript file in this tutorial, but we will be using it in a subsequent tutorial. So let's go ahead and put that into the static folder as well. So we've already included that style sheet. So now if we go back to our browser, go ahead and refresh this page, you can see that it already changed some of the styles, it changed the font, and it also just moved it over just a little bit. So there's still nothing too special going on, but in subsequent videos I'll show you how to add some basic bootstrap styles. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, be sure to check out the blog post for the full tutorial. Comment if you have questions, and thanks for watching.